What's up everyone? This is the phase four best in slot guide for Affliction. I wanted to do something a little different this phase with the BIS guides since there's so much new gear that comes out with ICC. So rather than showing you the phase four BIS, I wanted to break it down a little and give you multiple viable options per armor slot. So each slot will have its own slide with the absolute BIS, then a couple options from both 25 man and 10 man ICC. These slides will be linked in the description if you want to take them for whatever reason. Before we begin though, both Zephan and I from the Warlock Discord also have a Phase 4 BIS guides on Wowhead from Zephan and Icy Veins from myself, so feel free to check those out for more of a breakdown. A link to them both will be in the description as well as a link to the Warlock Discord, your one-stop shop for everything and anything Warlock related. Lastly, I stream all my Warlock gameplay over at twitch.tv slash Kirkspies where I play multiple classes, specifically a Demo and Affliction Warlock, Shadow Priest, Fire Mage, and a Fury Warrior. I'll be no lifing ICC upon launch as well, so stop by to meet some new friends and ask any questions. So this is the Horden Alliance best slot for Affliction. The only difference between the two are the Bracers and a couple gems on the Horde side in order to get that little extra bit of hit that Alliance gets from the Drain Eye. There are of course other pieces of gear you can use to make the hit up, which I'll show you in the slides, however these are the current highest simming sets for both factions. A quick note on the Phase 4 gems. For your meta, you're still going to use Chaotic Sky Flare Diamond while using two Purified Dreadstones to activate your meta gem. And then for your red sockets, you're going to use Rune Cardinal Rubies. And then for your yellow sockets, you want to use Reckless Amatrine for the haste on it while slotting any Veiled Amatrines to make sure that you're hit capped at all times. You also have a Rigid King's Amber if you're severely hurting on hit. And speaking on hit rating, it's very important to make sure that you're at 17% hit. But remember, you get 3% hit from a Shadow Priest Misery Talent or a Boomy's Imp Fairy Fire. You also get 3% from our Suppression Talent, and if you're Alliance, you'll get an extra 1% if you have a Drain Eye in your party. This makes it so without Suppression, you only need 14% hit if you're Horde, and 13% if you're Alliance. With Suppression, you will only need 11% as a Horde, and 10% as Alliance. Now, to talk about Tier 10 and the Set Bonus. The 2 set increases the Critical Strike chance of your Shadow Bolt and Corruption by 5%. This is a nice little boost to your main dot and your filler spell. As for the 4 set, this is phenomenal. Each time your Unstable Affliction deals damage, you have a 15% chance to gain 10% damage done by you and your pet. This procs frequently and is a very good and super important to track because you can snapshot that 10% damage bonus into your Corruption, meaning that when you get a proc at the start of the fight, you will need to make sure that you resnap your Corruption and also make sure you keep it up. I'll have a video on that soon, so make sure to follow the channel and see it later. As for which of the four pieces of Tier 10 you should use, the best options is to use Helm, Shoulders, Chest, and Gloves while using the offset pants off fester gut. There are of course other options, however this is the best setup that you can use. As to when to replace your 4 piece tier 9, you don't really want to replace it until you have all 4 of your tier 10, since the 4 set of tier 9 is still really good as it increases your corruption and your unstable affliction damage by 10%, so you can expect to continue to wear your T9 for a little bit longer. Now onto the gear options. For your helm, you really only want to get the tier 10 helm. It's just unparalleled and of course as mentioned earlier, the set bonus is insane. If for some reason you're not using the tier 9 helm right now, then Corporathar's ceremonial crown off the gunship on 25 man heroic isn't a good option in the meantime. However, you're probably still wearing the tier 9 one if you geared properly in TOC, so I'd not worry about it. As for the neck, there's quite a few options. Blood Queen's Crimson Choker from Blood Queen on heroic 25 man is the best option and what you should be aiming for. However, this is a very highly contested neck and might be hard to get right away, but luckily there are other great alternatives to hold you over until then. The other Blood Queen Stroker is a lesser item level one, but still really good, and it's also bind on equip, meaning you can pick one up from the auction house if you have their gold. Another great alternative is Bone Sentinel's Amulet off of Lord Maragar on Heroic 25 Man. This will be much, much easier to obtain, as it's from the first boss in ICC, and nobody will really have too much trouble killing this boss. Another great and very easy option is Soul Cleave's Pendant. This comes from a Heroic 10 Man Star Fang, and it's one of the many excellent pieces that you can get in the 10 Man Raid. So make sure to run your 10 mans weekly. Lastly, Amulet of Silent Eulogy off of Heroic 25 man gunship is a great neck if you find yourself needing some hit rating and it can hold you over until you get the coveted Blood Queen's Crimson Choker. For shoulders, as mentioned above, you want to use a tier 10 shoulders, Sanctified Dark Covenant Shoulder Pads. I'd not worry about any alternatives here as this should replace your tier 9 shoulder. Cloaks are very much less of a worry in this phase if you have the best assault cloak from TOC. As you can see, it's a very, very minor upgrade to even the Phase 4 Bisque Cloak Frostbinder Shredded Cape off of Heroic 25 Man Velithria. It's only a 5 spell power upgrade and a few haste. That being said, Frostbinders is the best option for cloaks that you can get in ICC. 
Great Cloak of the Turn Champion off of 25 man Heroic Deathbringer is a very good alternative as well. And Lich Wrappings is a good hit option out of 10 man if you're hurting on hit. Next up is Chest, which I mentioned should be your tier 10 chest, Sanctified Dark Coven Robe. Sanguine Silk Robes off of Prince Valinar from Heroic 25 man is a very nice option to wear to replace your Skyweaver's robes in the meantime while waiting to equip all four of your tier 10 pieces. Robe of the Waking Nightmare from Heroic 25 Man Velithria is a very nice option for hit rating if you're looking to fill in some hit while waiting to equip said tier 10 pieces. For Bracers, it will depend on your faction largely. Horde Biss is Lady's Brittle Bracers off of Lady Death Whisper in Heroic 25 Man, while Lion's Biss is Aether Soaked Bracers out of the 10 Man Heroic Rot Face since you don't need as much hit as Horde thanks to the Heroic Presence from the Draenei. Death Surgeon Sleeves is also off a of Rot Face, but from the 25 man Heroic version, and is a great alternative if you find yourself not needing hit while gearing up. As for your gloves, this should be your last piece of tier 10 Sanctified Dark Coven Gloves. Nothing much more to say here. For your belt, you have three very solid options, with Crushing Cold Wraith Belt being the best of the three off of Lord Marigar from 25 man Heroic. This is a very nice belt with a ton of haste. Lingering Illness from Festergut on 25 man Heroic is another very good alternative belt that has spirit instead of haste that is fine to wear until you get your Biss belt off of Lord Marigar. Lastly, Carterized Cord is a good option to hold you over until you get a good belt as well. It drops from 10 man, making it much, much easier to get and it's not contested at all. For pants, you want the Plaguebringer's Stained Pants off of Festergut and 25 man Heroic. These are amazing pants that not only have a ton of haste, but will also carry a ton of your hit rating. These are really contested, so it could take you a while to get. Tier 10 pants is a good pants alternative as well. However, the best setup with the tier 10 pieces was to use the plague bringers as the offset. Leggings of the Woven Death are bind on equip and are a good placeholder to wear until you get plague bringers. Although be careful because these have zero hit on them. So make sure you wear one of the other hit pieces mentioned in one of the armor slots. For your boots, you want to get plagued scientist boots from Festergut and 25 man heroic. These are amazing boots with a ton of haste and you want them ASAP. Both Ice Crown Spire Sandals and Death Frost boots are good hit alternatives to wear in the meantime and rather easy to obtain as one comes from 10 man and the other one is a BOE. You have a plethora of rings to choose from with the two best being Ashen's Band of Endless Destruction, which is acquired by reaching Exalted with the Ashen Verdict, which you should be doing right away and Ring of Rapid Ascent from 25 man Heroic Gunship. They both not only have a ton of haste, but Ashen has an amazing proc for 285 spell power for 10 seconds. Memory of Malagos off of Sendragosa on 25 man heroic is a good alternative ring that is only slightly behind ring of rapid ascent, swapping the crit for spirit. Prince Valinor drops an optional ring that you can get from 10 man, making it an easy ring to hold you over until you get one of the best rings. Lastly, Valinor also drops another ring on 25 man heroic that has a chunk of hit rating on it. If you find yourself lacking hit trinkets are much more exciting than they were in TOGC. We finally get the drop scale and flare. The two absolute best trinkets are Phylactery of the Nameless off of Sendragosa 25 man heroic, which has an amazing proc of 1,207 spell power for 20 seconds. And then the second trinket is Dislodge Foreign Object known as DFO off of Rotface 25 man heroic, which has 170 haste, which is a ton of haste while also giving your spells a chance to increase your spell power by 121 and an additional 121 every two seconds for 20 seconds. Both of these trinkets are extremely highly contested by every caster, so might take some time to obtain it, but try to get them as soon as you can. There's also a trinket called Never Melting Ice Crystal, which is kind of cool. It drops from the Pit of Sauron, and it's not that bad. It's got an on use that increases your crit chance by 920 for 20 seconds and reduces every time a non-dot crits. This is only nice because you can snap your corruption with it, so it still loses out heavily in comparison to the two best trinkets, which is kind of fun to use. Lastly, Misguided Quill is a decent hit alternative if you're hurting for hit while waiting for Phylactery and DFO. Weapons are very interesting and there are a ton of options. First off, Blood Surge, Kel'Thuzad's Blade of Agony is the absolute best option and is well ahead of every other option for weapons. However, this comes from Heroic 25 Man Lich King, which will take an overwhelmingly large majority of guilds a long time to kill. So this could take a very long time to get. In the meantime, there are a couple good alternatives for the main hand weapons. The first being Frozen Bone Spike from Lord Marigar's 25 man Heroic and Rigor Mortis from 25 man Heroic Professor Putricide. Both of these are direct upgrades to the TOGC best in slot over here and are very, very strong upgrades to hold you over until you get lucky enough to get Blood Surge. And for you staff users, there's also a couple decent staffs that you can get as well. Arcus, Great Staff of Antonidas is a really, really good staff that loses out slightly to the best in slot offhand and main hand combo. This would be a great weapon to use while waiting for your Biss main hand and offhand. 
However, this also drops off of 25 man Heroic Lich King, making it just as hard to obtain as Blood Surge. But if this does drop, you'd be wise picking it up and using it since all the other casters want that Blood Surge. So at least you'd have a powerful weapon while waiting a long time for Blood Surge. Lastly, Dying Light off Blood Queen on Heroic 25 man is another decent alternative for staffs and would be a strong upgrade compared to your TOGC setup while waiting to get any of the other better weapons. As for offhands, they're looking pretty good in this phase. Shadow Silk Spindle off of Prince Valinar on 25 man Heroic is the best option to get, while Sundial of Eternal Dusk is slightly behind it as it swaps crit for spirit. Both are good to get and I'd be happy with either one of them. Lastly, Scourgeur's Baton is a great alternative for offhands as this is much easier to obtain since it drops from 10 man off of Lady Death Whisper. It is also a phenomenal hit piece as well if you're lacking on hit rating. Last but not least is the Wands. We're finally able to ditch Petrified Ivy Sprig. Corpse Impaling Spike off of Rotface and 25 man Heroic is now your best in slot option for Wands, followed closely by Nightmare Ender off of Elithria on 25 man Heroic. Both are great wands, but Corpse Spike has haste on it, which is better than the spirit that Nightmare Ender has. Wand of Ruby Claret is a decent alternative to use in the meantime and is much easier to obtain since it comes from a Tin Man and also has some hit on it if you're lacking some hit. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and think about subscribing to the channel. I would really appreciate it. I'll have a bunch of ICC videos coming out as the phase progresses. Once again, you can check me out over at twitch.tv slash crixvibes where I'll be streaming all my ICC stuff and much more. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you soon. Good luck in ICC, my friends.